Thank you for listening to the Catch Fire London podcast. For more information about CTF London, visit us on ctfl.life. Good morning, everybody. It's a joy to be here. I have journeyed with Stu and Chloe since before the church was dreamt of. So I've journeyed with them for years. Uh, they're good friends. And so I'm delighted to be here this morning. First of all, I just want to say thank you to everybody. As I now have my director's hat on of CTF, I know what it's like to set up on a Sunday. I know what it's like to lead worship. I know what it's like to run a small group. I know what it's like to set up the coffee. I know what it's like to lead a church. And it takes a lot. So I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who does absolutely anything. You know, I want to say thank you for being here this morning, even if you've done nothing, because you are an integral part of the whole you know, we're here by royal divine appointment. It's not an accident that you are here this morning. It's not an accident that I'm here this morning. And we have done an amazing thing, praying and prophesying over the nation. And I do want to say something must be happening in London. Uh, I go back in the Christian scene a lot of years. And... Uh, to see the London City Mission, which my parents used to support, so I know a bit about them, and Kensington Temple in one meeting together, God must be up to something. I have a sister in Holland, and she Skyped me, I think it was the day of the day of that prayer meeting, and I said, you never guess what, London City Mission and Kensington Temple are in a prayer gathering together. She said, you must be joking. God is up to something, and as Kamiko said, it is sad that it's had to get to the nation being in this uh, state for us to wake up, for leaders to come together and pray. And I think, if you can pray, I think there is another level of unity to come together. Church, government, business, and monarchy. We have an absolute ripe situation. What an archbishop we've got. Preached to 4,000 in Winchester Cathedral on Pentecost. Masses of people were healed. And that went round all the cathedrals in the nation by uh, whatever you call it these days. <coughs> we have a believing prime minister who goes to Justin Welby for prayer. Did you know that? We have a queen who is spirit-filled. I mean, what is happening? And we've got those of us in business who would love to see this happen. Father, you are about to do something in our nation, and we are all part of it. I want to say thank you that now is the time for the sons of God to be revealed. Now is the time for us to wake up. Now is the time for the sons of Issachar, those with prophetic strategy, to arise. Now is the time for the bride to come forth in all her glory. Now is the time for us to live out of our spirits rather than our minds. I do believe we're in a prophetic season of the sons of God being revealed. And that is so exciting because who's a son of God here? It's time for all of us to be revealed. And <coughs> that's not what I was going to say. <laughs> but I just love how God sets up a meeting. And I usually have stuff in my heart. But if you see me writing furiously, I'm tracking what's going on in the meeting. Uh, because, you know, there needs to be an overall whole, a flow going on right the way through what Father wants to do, because this isn't our meeting, this is God's meeting, and we've come together with him this morning. Uh, can I just give another plug for the evening class, uh, starting on Wednesday? Uh, it'll be 
the four Wednesdays are taking the five values, and you may say, well, I know those. Can I encourage you to come? Uh, because every time we put ourselves in the way of something, we can go deeper. I have the privilege of, of speaking on restoration of the heart, and I know that the revelation that I will bring and the application of it will be slightly different than I've spoken on before. Because we're always moving on, aren't we? And there's always, we never stop um, f delving the depths of God. So I want to encourage you to come to those evening classes, to come and get yourself saturated, to let Father work in you. And very often what I find, I go to such a meeting and I, God speaks to me about something totally different. <laughs> But it's just putting ourselves in the way of that. So really would en encourage you in that. So the series um, that we've been looking at <coughs> over this period is about upward looking in Christ from Philippians. And I want to say do something first that will highlight what I want to speak on uh, out of Philippians 3 today. I woke up about four months ago with the word entwined. The word entwined, what does that mean to you? Just think about it. When you hear the word entwined, what does that mean to you? Just tell your neighbor, what does it mean to you? Something that comes to my mind is the word meshed together. Totally one, totally entwined. You know, if any of you got ivy growing anywhere, uh, <laughs> you know, that gets entwined uh, and it's difficult to get it <coughs> off. Have you ever thought about the fact that you are meshed together entwined together with Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And as I started to think about this entwined, word entwined, I felt God say to me, I am entwined with you. Now, I've, I've been on this journey of um, really understanding intimacy from the point of view that, you know, I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places right now. You and I are firmly got our feet in Wembley, but our spirits are seated with Christ in heavenly places, surrounded by the angels and archangels, and we've been worshipping with them this morning. That was our prayer in the pre-service prayer. Very conscious of the glory of God around me, the kabod glory around me, the uh, Shekinah within, because Shekinah is about filling a vessel. But this entwined, I was intrigued. So being the person I am, I thought, come on, let's kick some boundaries. Let's see what's going on here. I wouldn't have woken up with that word if Father didn't want to enlighten something in me. Over the years, I've been on a journey, and I was interested that Kamiko actually mentioned about our spirits this morning. Because who is the real us? It's our spirits. You know, I have emotions, I have a will, I have a body, and I have a mind. They're all entwined together. But it's my spirit that connects with the Holy Spirit. Yeah? <coughs> so this entwinement, I started to see, and I'm going to demonstrate, I'm going to get eight people up, in a moment, and I'm going to demonstrate it to you. Because in a Philippians 3, this upward call in Christ has really cut those, all the in Christ words, uh, phrases, have really got a new meaning for me now. Where was it? Yes, in Christ. But now it is in, definitely in Christ. <laughs> and I understand what it means. 
And so what I began to see was it was my spirit entwined with Father Jesus and the Holy Spirit. My mind, my will, my emotions, and my body are all in that entwinement line. And I have been asking in my morning devotions, I have been asking uh, Father Jesus and the Holy Spirit to come and coach me and nurture my spirit. And you could say, well, what about your mind? I believe with this entwinement, as we get the revelation of it, because we are all entwined. If we are born again by the Spirit of God, we are entwined. And I believe it's the revelation of it. Um, so I, I've asked Tom if I can speak on this. <laughs> and so as we are entwined, my emotions get stabilized because I'm not in control. Who's I'm? I'm not in control. My will has got stronger over the four months. I know it. I can feel it. And I'm addressing things I've never addressed before. <coughs> My body is on the journey. <laughs> and it now needs to know. It needs to do some stuff. But my mind comes into its fullest capacity. Because this entwinement with Father Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Now, I would like uh, Ed, uh, Ida, Leanne, Helen, Vanessa. I know these people, you see, so I can ask them. Uh, Kelly and Jono, are you both here? Yep. Okay, can you all come up? I need one more volunteer. Is, is, can we go anywhere? Yeah. I need one more. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. If you'd like to come up here. Okay, Kelly, Jono, and Ed, would you like to stand in a three here, that way, facing this door? Okay. This is Father Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Okay. Ida, would you like to be your, the spirit, our spirit? Okay. Can you hold on to Kelly? Because you're entwined there. Would you like to be Will? <laughs> yes. Good. Now hold on. Emotions, body, and mind. Okay, all entwined together. Does this make sense to you? As we are all entwined together, who's leading? Who are we? At? I find myself worshipping out of my spirit because I'm so amazed at what Father is leading me into. And how my, I found the benefits of asking uh, Father Jesus and the Holy Spirit to coach my spirit. My will is stronger, as I've said. My mind is blowing me because I'm doing things I never ever imagined I could do. Like business accounts in great detail. Ask my business colleague, he'll tell you the difference. Um, <coughs> and my body is saying, come on, wake up, get alive do something about your shape. Um, it is amazing. So every morning I let the, the Jesus, Father, and the Holy Spirit co coach my spirit and nurture my spirit into its fullest capacity. So it's affecting my will, my will, emotion, body, mind. Yeah. Now, I'd like you three to turn around this way. No, just stay there. They're now face. This is when I'm in my coaching session, because they're now coaching me, and I ask for their wisdom and inspiration during the day. Can you see how you are meshed together? You are entwined, and when we come now to talk about in Christ, does that make a difference to you and how you see things? Because we are, we are meshed together. We are in Christ. Hey. So all the in Christ statements that Paul speaks about are possible and applicable in our life and situation. Great. Thank you, guys. <laughs> mm. So actually... In, in the worship, there were a lot of songs. Well, there was one song in particular we sang that related to this. It was, let praises rise from inside of me. 
I'm entwined. Uh, may you delight inside of me. I am entwined. Set me on fire from inside. I am entwined. So when you turn up at work tomorrow, who's there? Do you become untangled when you leave your house? When you're parenting your children, when you're just having a time at home, you're entwined. We're together. We're not separate. We are one. And I think for me, when I started to think about this, it was the revelation. I, I don't... I was thinking about the whole thing. You know, it's about revelation. It's not me trying me to do anything about it, except enjoying the relationship that I have with them. So let's look at Philippians chapter 3. If you'd like to turn with me in your Bibles or on your phone or iPad, wherever you have it. I love the Word of God. I was brought up in the Brethren... They would have a fit at what I'm doing now. <coughs> um, but I was brought up in the brethren, and so I had a good grounding in the word. So let's go through Philippians chapter 3 from verse 7 together. And I'm going to stop and pause as I go through. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. But if you look at entwinement, we lose everything, but we've gained everything. And I want to pick up on, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ. Now, if you look at the Greek there, it's a Jewish idiom that is used there for sexual, in, in, uh, sexual intercourse. Is that entwinement? I consider them garbage. Well, that's a strong thing, isn't it? That I may gain Christ and be found in him. Having the revelation of entwinement is being found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in, in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ. That word again, that Id Jewish idiom for sexual intercourse, that entwinement, I want to know him. Well, I think actually when we, get, when we uh, have the revelation of entwinement, the getting to know is a lot more real. I'm also interested in this entwinement uh, to see how it affects healing. It affects motivation and everything else. I'm actually um, working on this with a friend of mine who's an author, and we're going to um, bring out a publication on it. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participate in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Now, this is a little bit I want to concentrate on. Now that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. That's exciting, isn't it? Now is the time for the sons of God to be revealed. Now is the time for us to wake up. 
Brothers, I do... <coughs> yeah, sorry, let's go back to verse 12. But I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Do you know why Jesus Christ took hold of you? Do you know why you were born? Do you know what part of the restoration of all things you are playing? Because you are not in isolation in the global plan of God. And I am just so... <laughs> I'm in a wild season of life. I have to say I was 70 uh, two months ago. Never imagined I would be doing what I'm doing. I've just um, started a diploma course with the Coaching Academy. I've decided I will not go to a Christian one because I want to be thoroughly stretched. Um, and I have a sense that one of my callings to take hold of is actually to um, uh, coach high-level CEOs. My two callings are government and business. Um, absolutely crazy. I mean, sign something, and I was the one who signed it on uh, Tuesday, was a marketing, a sales and marketing online platform, which is going to cost us 600 and something pounds a month, and there was a big onboarding fee with it. Uh, and I'm thinking, what am I doing? I've now got to get to grips with this thing. But I am taking hold of what Christ took hold of me for. And I'm not going to let it go. And for you, it will be different. But I would encourage you to press on to that goal. Because it's not you driving it. If you are living an the revelation of entwined life, then they are motivating it. They are opening the doors. Had a crazy time in New York um, last month. Where are we? July, aren't we? No, it was May. Middle of May. <laughs> a bit slow on the uptake of this. God said to me, um, go and pray for Wall Street, um, the financial center of New York Stock Exchange, uh, three and a half years ago. Well, I just got there three and a half years later. So, But anyway, right place, right time. Emailed John Arnott and said, uh, do you know any business contacts in New York? And <coughs> uh, he put me in touch with somebody. There were a series of five emails that sort of crossed the states from one uh, side to the other. It landed up with me and my uh, business colleague landing up in a prayer meeting for Wall Street uh, at the top of an inn just near the stock exchange. Um, and somebody came up to us. Now, you have to understand, getting on the trading floor of the stock exchange is only by invitation only. And I... I just thought the nearest we would get was to lay hands on it. A guy came up to us and said, I am the trader on the floor. Would you like to come in? Well, my eyes just went, <laughs> you must be joking, God. God will open the way for your destiny. Now, your destiny is probably not to go into the stock exchange in New York. And I want to say that we decided we're business and government combined, so we went down to Washington, D.C., um, couldn't get into the White House. We knew that before because they, no international visitors are allowed now. Within one hour of being arriving in Washington, D.C., we were in the prayer room in Capitol Hill. Without any... We made a phone call when we got there. And the 92-year-old who we were with, ex-congressman, uh, her husband... Uh, was a, a congressman, and she'd been part of the Bush administration. She said, would you like to go out on the balcony? Well, you don't say no. Well, I don't. <laughs> so there we were, standing on the balcony, looking down the mall. God had opened that door to us where we had no clue one hour before we want. I want to encourage you to take hold of that for which God took hold of you. And for a lot of you... It'll be wild. It'll be outside the church. I mean, I had no idea what I would be doing. And I'm absolutely loving it. And <coughs> just been invited to be on the advisory board of Christians in government. I mean, how you do that, I have no idea. But let, you know, this entwined life, let God take hold of you. For which I've lost it. Um... But I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. 
And I want to say something, and I want to make uh, an apology to the church global that we have, as church leaders, neglected coaching. When I went on this uh, coaching academy taster course, I sat with someone who had to have an issue. There was no prayer ministry in it, folks. I had been walking around my house thinking I am... Um, what did I say? Yeah, I think I'm lazy, and I think I'm indisciplined. Now, what prayer ministry do I need to do? Anyway, so got on this coaching academy course, and I was being coached by somebody who wasn't a Christian. And suddenly the Holy Spirit gave me the answer because I've been struggling to get to the gym and swim when I got a membership in the hotel around the corner from my apartment. Holy Spirit just dropped the solution into my mind. So she's now um, my accountability. But coaching is about moving forward, believing that you are the expert. I love this. It's so kingdom that you are the expert, you have gold inside of you that needs to be released. You have the solutions and answers inside of you. And yeah, prayer ministry, there are limiting beliefs. I was very interested to see how they were going to deal with limiting beliefs, having been in RTF for years and years. <laughs> but the type of coaching that we are going to be doing as a business, we are doing as a business, has a mix. It's coaching directed, but it has some prayer ministry into it to do with the limiting beliefs and listening to the Holy Spirit. I'm coaching somebody in another nation at the moment who I had an amazing call with her on Thursday night. Uh, <coughs> she is in a very, very busy global retail organization, and her thing was partnering with God at work. How do I do it? In one month, through her own, because uh, I've just asked her questions, she is absolutely firing on this. I cannot believe it. <laughs> and I just want to say uh, to the church globally, forgive us as church leaders for harping with church prayer ministry, which is absolutely right, but we haven't coached dreams and visions and everything else. Now is the time for the sons of God to be revealed. Now is the time for us to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Now we don't have to, it says I press on. Paul says I press on. You know, I got up late this morning. I came in by train. I meant to get up at quarter six and it was quarter past six when I woke up and needed to be at Cambridge Station by five to seven. No, five to eight, sorry. It wasn't that bad. But I was pressing on as I was driving down the A14. I was pressing on. To, to my determined goal of getting this, uh, this train to be here this morning. You know, we are entwined. Let's get hold of Christ. Let's get hold of Father. Let's get hold of the Holy Spirit in this entwinement and move forward with them. They're all around me. Move forward to the goal that they have set out for me before the foundation of the world. It's something we need just get in alignment with. And it's just so exciting. You know, since I've started this coaching and, and studying it and doing it, I've come alive. <laughs> but <coughs> So let's press on for that. We're not striving in our own strength. As we are entwined, we are doing it with them. And they're motivating us, saying, do this, do that, do the other. Because we're one with them. Time's gone. <coughs> so I believe there's a question we need to all ask ourselves and I'd like to give it to you for homework and take it to your fire group this coming week or whenever you're meeting what is your part in the restoration of all things what is your part in the universal plan of God at this moment in time because we don't just happen to be born. Atlas didn't just happen to be born a few weeks ago. He is a strong man <laughs> who is an earth leader, an earth changer, and a global transformer, building on the ceiling of his parents. And, you know, we're not, you know, you may just be 
think, well, I'm just working in a hospital. Yes, you are, but you're part of the restoration of all things. You're part of the ministry of Jesus, of reconciling the world to himself. And that word world there means world systems as well as people. You know, we're part of you. Any of you involved in government, business, uh, leadership in any role, any place, then you are part of the global plan of God to bring restoration. Because now is the time for the prophetic strategist to be released. Now, some of you have dreams and visions at night. And they're strategies. Take hold of that for which Christ take hold of us. I want us to do some ministry right now at the end. No, I'll do something else first. <coughs> now is the time to move forward. Because Paul says here... Uh, forget what is behind. Forget what is behind and press on. So let's today move on. Let's forget what is behind. And you could say, Caroline, it's awfully painful. Yeah, I know. If I, can I be honest, if I hadn't chosen to move out of grief and bereavement, I wouldn't be flying around the world right now doing what I'm doing. So I understand the pain, and actually in twine, I must just tell you this testimony, because I, um, I was debating the, the question of, well, I've, Father Jesus and the Holy Spirit, my, my apartment is full of angels, and blah, 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 and I have this rela amazing relationship with Father Jesus and the Holy Spirit, but I was still lonely. And I couldn't equate this one. There was a mixing piece of the jigsaw, and entwinement has done it. I no longer feel lonely or in that place of loneliness. And I speak to everybody who is on their own for whatever reasons. You know, this has healed that for me, which is totally amazing because I'm entwined. They're not just around me. I don't just sense angels around me. I've actually entwined right from my spirit into, with Father Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So now is the time to move on, to put the past behind us. And we're going to do two bits of ministry this morning. One is the moving on. And so it's a prophetic act of shifting your body, of saying, yes, I'm moving on. Now, if you don't know what you're moving on to, then ask the Holy Spirit this week. <laughs> I mean, it's a bit of a brave step to just say I'm moving on. But I want to encourage you out of my own story that I would not be doing today what I'm doing if I hadn't chosen to move on, if I hadn't chosen to lay some stuff down. Um, and so there's a moving on. And then I want to pray into sleep. We had, as part of the worship, there was, um, I wrote it down. Uh, what was it? Yeah, pour, we pour out our love on you in the middle of the night. And uh, I've been thinking about sleep a lot lately and done a bit of research on it. Just to say, if anybody, uh, I'll give you a quick resource. Faith Blatchford, who is part of the Bethel team, is bringing about, out a book on tu fourth, yeah, Tuesday called The Battle for Sleep and Dreams. And it is in the night hours where we have... Uh, while we're asleep, that so much is being formed. You know, if we go back to Genesis 1, our sleep is not to get over the day, it's to prepare ourselves because God said the evening and the morning were the first day. So the night hours are to equip us for the work of our hands in the daylight hours. Isn't that good? I mean, God's got it all sussed, but we've just, um, don't know what. So I want, to, I want to make a call for anybody who's having trouble with sleep. I'd like to pray over you corporately and break the power of anything. But if you do wake in the night, you know, remember what we sang this morning. We pour out our love on you in the middle of the night. Won't that help you get back to sleep? I think it probably will. You know, some of us fret and frazzle if we awake in the night. Pour out your love. That's what we sang this morning. That was an inspiration from Father. So I'd invite you to stand. If you know you want to move on, you want to press on, 
and be part of the restoration of all things, your part and your call, uh, wherever it is in your sphere of influence. And uh, it may not and well not be in the church, uh, because God's got us all out somewhere. The person I was coaching on uh, Skype uh, on Thursday night said, Oh, I've just realized why I'm out here. I'm an evangelist. <laughs> so, if you want to move on, I want to encourage you to talk to the Holy Spirit about it. Now, this is serious. You know, we don't want to make stuff up. But if we want to move on, then I want to encourage you to take a step forward, step back, however you can move. Get out into the aisle, come down here, whatever you want. And as you do, you're saying, Holy Spirit, I want to move on. I want to be part of the restoration of all things. I want to partner with you with what you're doing. <coughs> Holy Spirit, please show me what I should be doing. It's time to move on. We got a musician. Yes, thank you. Shaka bar. I don't know whether we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah. 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 It is the second of July, two thousand and seventeen. And you are making a commitment to move on. put the past behind you and to move on I would encourage you to think about entwinement because that surely helps us move on and I bless your moving on I bless your moving out I bless you with the revelation from Father Jesus and the Holy Spirit of what you're moving into He has everything uh, in he has placed everything inside of you that you need. And I bless that in the name of Jesus. I bless you with strength. I bless you with wisdom and insight from Father. I bless you with people around you who can show you how to take, if they're dreams and visions you've had at night, how to anchor them on the earth and make them pra a practical reality. And I bless you with your will being strengthened in the, pa in the face of challenge. I met several challenges driving here this morning. <coughs> All coming here. But I want to say that with every challenge, there is an overcoming strategy. John 16, 33. In this world, you will have trial and tribulation. Jesus wasn't cursing us. But, <coughs> but take heart, take courage, because I have overcome the world. When Jesus died on the cross, he overcame every obstacle. And heaven's strategies and blueprints are released to us right now to know how to move forward. And I bless you with that in the name of Jesus. Okay. Hmm. If God is speaking to you and ministering to you, just stay where you are. Let him you know the fullness of what he wants to do come in you. But anybody who would like ministry for sleep or sleeplessness, let's have it that way. <laughs> if you would like to come forward, um, we'd like to pray for you. I don't know who's on.
The word says our sleep shall be sweet. And God designed sleep for the refreshment of our brain, for rejigging stuff as we sleep, of strategies and visions and dreams being given uh, while we're asleep. And so, you know, it's our, my desire to see everybody sleep well because we want to come into the fullness. Now, there's some very practical things you can do, like not have your phone on Facebook uh, and then put the light out. I mean, there's a huge number of practical things we can do. I can't watch Question Time before I go to bed because I just get so stimulated by it. So, Father, I thank you that you designed us to sleep and to sleep well. Sometimes you do wake us up for various things. And so I just come against everything in the name of Jesus, every attack of the enemy that is coming against you in the name of Jesus that is preventing you sleep. And I break the power of that in the name of Jesus, and I declare rest and sleep over you now in Jesus' name. I'd encourage you to take an integrated approach on this, whereby, you know, look at what practical things you can do. But before, and before you go to sleep, just ask the Holy Spirit to prepare you for the next day. And I woke up this week with something amazing that has moved the business on. So I bless the night hours for you. I bless your sleep. I bless you to go to sleep with an overflowing heart, to pour out your love to Jesus as you're going to sleep. <laughs>